Hey guys, it's Anna. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I picked up a few things and thought I would share them with you. Um, one, I picked up this little set. It was a package of two. You got a blue, uh, green one and a black one. Um, and this little package here was about, uh, I don't know, less than two and a quarter probably. Um, they are a five by seven. Um, in yeah, five by seven in size, and uh, they're just two little composition books, um, 80 sheets each. And so, I picked those up to see if they would be um, a good um, notebook to use uh, with fountain pens, and not necessarily um, like for the highest quality of paper for fountain pens, but if you just want to write with your fountain pens and you just want it to be an enjoyable experience, and yet you still want to be able to use both sides of your paper. Um, so I thought I would give this a try. So here I tested out um, various different Sharpies and Pilots, uh, gel, gel pens, um, Sharpie gel pen, Pilot gel pen, a Uniball pi um, uh, Signo Micro uh, gel pen. Um, so these are kind of typical pens that I'll use just randomly during the day uh, for work notes. And then I also um, put down all of the uh, fountain pens that I have currently inked um, and just wrote out the fountain pen that it is and then the ink name um, or color. And uh, <clears throat> I thought I would just see how this paper handled all of these um, inks. And then I also even used my glass dip pen and dipped directly into the bottle and um, wrote this as well. So I could see how the paper handled a heavier ink load, for example. Um, so the one, um, one ink that I noticed had some trouble on here was the Twisby Echo um, and an extra fine and the Birmingham Pen Company Projector Film ink. It actually feathered quite heavily. Um, you can see it's, the line doesn't look crisp, it looks kind of fuzzy. Um, that's where the ink has gone into the fibers of the paper then. Um, but most everything else um, stayed really crisp and nice. And I even see with the Diamine Aurora Borealis, I even see some shading in the ink. So it's still an interesting looking um, um, ink to use on this paper. Also, the Robert Oster Gracie's still has um, shading in it as well. So that would be interesting. But look at the gingerbread ink that I bought from Diamine. Um, just written with a regular fountain pen. Look at the um, shading it provided. So it's really interesting and beautiful. Some of the inks look flat, but they probably look flat on every paper. So, you know, not every ink has um, shading or sheening. Um, or sparkle, so it just depends um, on the ink that you're using. But I was happy to see that these beautiful inks, like the Gingerbread, the Aurora Borealis, um, still provide, and the Gracie's, still provided an interesting look to them when used on this inexpensive paper. So now let's take a look at the back side and see if I'd be able to use this piece of paper uh, on both sides. And I would, look at that. So there's a little bit of ghosting here. Um, this one is almost bleeding through. Um, but this is the, um, this is where I wrote with the glass dip pen. So that's quite a bit of ink put down on that paper and to only have it ghost and maybe bleed through just a smidge right there. That's pretty amazing. And this one here is the Birmingham ink and it's the one that had the issue with the feathering. And you can see here that it's the most visible of all of the other inks here on the page. So I was quite pleased with this. Um, they also make this book in a larger standard composition size book, um, and it's exactly the same. Um, so I would expect the paper is probably similar, um, but you know, if it's not, if it's not uh, put to the test, can't be certain. Um, but the other thing I liked about this little book here is that the pages are perforated. So you can actually um, tear them out of your uh, book if you'd like. So I thought that was interesting. I've not seen that in a composition book before. So, um, but anyways, I thought I would share that little uh, interesting tidbit there. And then the other thing I picked up was, um, and just keep in mind this, that uh, green notebook came in a pack of two with that black one. And those were the only colors I could find. Um, I also picked up this notebook there at the Walmart. This is a pen and gear. Um, so this was pen and gear as well, just so you see the branding there. Um, so this is pen and gear as well. And this reminds me of um, some of the campus style notebooks. 
and um, just the paper formatting and the look of the plastic cover and the squishy binding. Um, so I thought I would grab this. This one was just a little over $4, but I love this size when I'm taking notes for work because if I'm in a meeting, um, sometimes my meeting notes um, will run two or three pages. Um, if I have like a letter size or a legal size pad of paper to write on. But when I have a piece of paper that's smaller, I write smaller and my notes are more condensed and I'm not wasting as much paper. Because I tend to, when on the larger um, notepads, I write really large. Um, but if I have a smaller piece of paper, I'm able to, you know, write more concisely and smaller. And I like that. So, and it doesn't take up as much space on my desk, to be honest. Um, so I picked this one up to see if I might like it. I like the layout of this because it already has... Um, the date area up here at the top and you can actually number it um, really easily. So I like to always put like who I'm meeting with and what the topic of the meeting is and the date um, on all of my notes. And so this will be really handy for that. And I like the spacing of the lines. I like that it's a light gray um, ink already on the lines, but I wanted to see <clears throat> what it was like um, with all of my pen types. So I did the same thing in the back and did a pen test. And so again, I did all my um, currently inked fountain pens. And then I even did, um, again, the glass dip with the um, gingerbread ink. So the glass dip pen. So again, that's dipping right in the ink file and putting down a lot more ink than you would with a regular inked pen. <clears throat> and then I used the Uniball Signo, the Sharpie Gel, the Pilot, and... Uh, uh, oh, I have another glass dip pen that's a no name, so I used that as well. And so you can see it doesn't put down as much ink as the um, Moon Man one does. But so I used all of these inks, and uh, let's see what it looks like on the other side. And yay, there's very little ghosting and only a couple little bleed through spots on the hearts where I really laid on the ink heavily to get those hearts filled in. And that's it. This one shadows through a little bit, but this is the Lamy Safari. That's a broad nib and I would never use that for notes. Um, so everything else, I would be perfectly comfortable using this side of the page over. So I'm quite excited about this. Now this particular paper, um, like I showed you in the previous one where it had shading, on um, some of the inks. This one doesn't seem to have it as nicely. So you still get some interesting looks when you look at the gingerbread ink and uh, the Aurora Borealis has slight shading. So it's a little bit interesting, but it, they're all very flat. Um, so they're not something I would want to, this is not paper I would want to quote unquote waste my fun inks on um, just because they're not going to perform as nicely. But however, this paper worked really well with the gel pens and it was a pleasure to write on and it was very smooth. And um, so I would be excited to use this as a work notebook where I'm, you know, at the end of the um, year or six months or however long it would take me to fill this notebook, um, actually probably two months, um, it just gets set aside and then at the end of the year, it really just gets tossed. So, um, you know, I'm not looking to have anything fancy in here. I just want the paper to be nice. I want it to uh, be pleasant to write on. And I love that it has these little extra features up here like page numbers and dates. So, um, love that. Also, if you were to want to grid this, um, the top line and the bottom line have little hash marks which you could use um, as a quick rule guide um, to draw a line. So that's quite handy as well. And then I like this squishy um, coil here. It's very pleasant and um, it's not sharp like a regular metal coil is. So I like that as well. So I think I'll use this one for my work notes next and um, I'll keep um, my eye out for another one if I decide I like it and I want to um, use this style of notebook again once this one is full. I'll pick up an extra. So that's that. Then I picked up this. Um, this is a personal size notebook and it's only 30 sheets, but it says it's heavyweight paper and, uh, it says you can, the last 15 sheets are perforated so you could take them out and it's college ruled. Now this is the only, um, line style that I could find in this little, little notebook here. Um, I was hoping to find one that was, um, grid paper, but I'm perfectly okay with college ruled um, lined paper. So what I was really hoping that this would be ideal for is in my notebook here where I have um, my calendar. Uh, this is where I keep, you know, my schedule and everything like that um, noted. I like using um, 
I like using grid paper. And so that's why I was kind of hoping that I could find this new uh, notebook in grid paper. But I like using this grid paper. Um, the notebooks that I'm using are from Wanderings. They're just an inexpensive insert you can find on Amazon. And they're about $12 for three of them, a little over $11 for three of them, um, which is, you know, three, almost $3, $3.69 over three dollars um, a piece so you know it's still a lot less than it is if you were to buy a traveler's note back notebook name brand insert for example um, but still nothing that's gonna break the bank right um, so the one that I'm using for Oliver's um, journal this insert was about I want to say eleven dollars but it's a really the really fancy um, uh, Tomoe River paper um, and it's just a really nice quality uh, notebook. So not necessarily something that I would have to have for just my scheduling. And then this last notebook here um, that I use for notes, I just use, um, you know, I just put stuff in here that is just things I just need to remember for the moment. It's not something I'm trying to archive or keep for posterity, nothing like that. If this, when this notebook is done, I, I'll just throw it away. Um, so I was hoping to find something that I could replace these inserts with that was a little less expensive than three or four dollars for an insert. Um, you know, like I said, while that's still not going to break the bank, it would be nice to have something a little less expensive. So I thought I'd pick up this and see how this notebook performs. Because what I could do <clears throat> is actually cut it down to size to be my regular um, notebook size. So I'd have to cut it off. Um, about here, I'd have to cut off about an inch, inch and a half. So, um, but I'm okay with that. If this is a nice paper and pleasant to write on um, and works with my pens, so I'm not having to keep a specific pen next to me if I wanna write in my journal or my you know, scribble book, basically. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a test. I'll go ahead and test, um, maybe not every pen with you, but I'll test um, all of the different styles of pens so that we can see if this paper would handle the inks and I'd be able to use both sides of the paper regardless of which pen I used. So I'm just gonna start here with this little blue Sharpie. I use these quite a bit actually. This is just the S gel and it's a metal body. And I love how these write. They're really, really smooth and uh, it's just a really beautiful, uh, nice blue color as well. So let's do here, let's... Uh, ink test page and I like doing this on the um, on the last page of the new notebooks that I use um, even if it's something that I've used before I'll always test it um, <clears throat> maybe not as thoroughly as, I, as I've been testing these um, but I'll always test the back page um, just to make sure <clears throat> I can still use my favorite inks or if I'm gonna my favorite pens or if I'm gonna have to switch to you know a different gel pen or a ballpoint or something like that um, so, all right, so let's give this one a shot here Oh, it's very, very smooth. It's very, very smooth. Yeah, that feels nice. It's <clears throat> it's very satiny. The paper's not as thin as the Tomo River paper. Um, and it's not quite as smooth either, but it's still super smooth. Um, all right, let's try this one. Um, Uniball Signo Micro. Um, and as I was saying, um, the, the books that I like or the line that I like when I'm doing scheduling um, and uh, some of my other um, things as well, I like the grid, but if it's just going to be my scribble adult book, I'm fine with lines. As long as they're not like, you know, 12 millimeters line separation, those are, some of them get a little out of control with their line spacing. Pilot G2 seven black gel pen all right let's <clears throat> start looking at some of the uh, fountain pens here so this is the this is the one that had the bleeding effect um, in this green notebook so when I had mentioned earlier that the Birmingham Birmingham ink had the feathering Um, that's this pen, so let's give this one a shot here. Ooh, 
Oops, I spelled that wrong. There's no E in there. <laughs> so, Birmingham Penco projector film. So we'll let that dry and uh, see how it turns out. Here's a really inexpensive little $8 fountain pen. Um, I love these things. They are the Pilot Kakuno. And uh, you do have to buy a cartridge or a converter to put in them. So you can use cartridge, cartridge ink. You can clean out a cartridge and refill it with whatever ink you want to. Or you can buy a little converter to keep the ink in here, which is a separate cost. Um, so your $8 pen is now um, a $15 pen, but still... Um, these are great little pens. My favorite width, uh, width of nib on these is a medium. And uh, so let's give this one a go. <clears throat> and I like their little logo here has the, like a happy face <laughs> under the, of the U. Um, this is a medium and this is Noodlers. Air Core Blue. Actually, it's blue black. Um, this ink takes forever to dry, and even once you think you it is dry, um, you've given it enough time, it will still smear. Um, this is another one of the Pilot Kakunos. This one is um, also a medium nib. And this one is Noodler's Sequoia. This one does not take as long to dry, thankfully. I love this color. Um, but that Air Corps Blue, whoo that ink takes a day to dry. Um, let's see, which other color should we do here? Um, let's try the Aurora Borealis because that does have some beautiful shading. All right, so this is a Twisby and it has that beautiful um, blue, Aurora Borealis. It's like a teal blue, really, really beautiful. And all my Twisbys um, have e extra fine nibs. I think I would like to get one that's a medium nib. Um, and this is So see, it's really providing nice shading and or uh, shading here, uh, where you can see the differences in the ink color when the when the nib lays down more ink in some places than others. Um, let's try this one. This is the gingerbread ink. This is an interesting pen. This is the Moonman C1, and it has this really large reservoir here that you just fill with an eyedropper. So it has an exceptional amount of ink. Um, capacity. And then as your color draws down, um, you can see how pretty it looks in the barrel there. So I think this is a fun pen. Moonman C1, and this is a fine nib. I can already see this is going to be fun. Diamine. gingerbread. Yeah, see how pretty that is? Ooh, exciting. And keep in mind, this little notebook was, I want to say 90 to, 92 cents, I think. Less than a dollar. Um, let's try something a little heavier here. This is a Twisby. I really like the Twisby pens. This one is really, really nice. Um, these are the Twisby Echo. There is also a Twisby Echo T, and um, it has the grip here is kind of like a triangle to help you learn the proper way to hold a pen. Um, and so that's the really only the difference um, where the Twisby Echo just has a round uh, grip section. And this is... Platinum Carbon Black, which is my permanent ink. <clears throat> I 
Um, let's try this one. This is the Caveco Brass Sport. And the ink that I have in here is called Burgundy Royale. And that is a Robert um, Oster ink. It's beautiful. I really love that color. And let's try, let's try this Lamy Safari. This is the one I have um, the broad nib on. And so it lays down a lot of ink and it's not something I would ever use for notes. Um, I uh, use it to address envelopes, basically. <laughs> um, this is the charcoal. And this is a broad nib. And the last one I think I'll try is this little cutie. This is another Coveco. And um, this is an all sport and um, it's made out of aluminum where most of the uh, Quebeco pens that you see are made out of plastic like uh, this one here is made out of plastic um, this one is made out of aluminum and it has this fun uh, color way to it which is the stone washed blue jeans so i thought this was really fun and uh, they have it also in stone washed black um, but i really love the blue let's see Um, and this is a gray seas and it's also a Robert Oster ink. I love this pen. Uh, it's in a medium nib. I love this because it's so cute and tiny and it's basically a pocket pen. Um, so I carry it in my purse and I uh, love this little clip here. It makes me um, have the ability to clip it into the pocket of my purse. And uh, I just love this little thing. So fun, fun. And let's see, this uh, brass one here too, it's the same length um, as the aluminum one, but it's super heavy. It's like twice the weight of the blue one, but also a really, really great pen. And I think that'll do it. Let's see if we can take a look at the other side here. Um, so first of all, though, before we do, this paper was a pleasure to write on. Not super, super slippery, so you have enough grip on the paper to maintain control of your pen. Some papers are so slippery, it's, I find them kind of hard to write on. Um, but the gingerbread ink was um, able to show its beautiful shading. Um, the uh, gray seas ink also has some nice shading as well so I would be pleased to use and, and the aurora borealis as well um, I would be pleased to use these um, fountain pen inks in this little notebook here so let's see how the other side of the paper fared let me put let me put this down here because I think that uh, air core blue is still wet Oh my gosh, look at that. Not anything came through. Not even the Lamy Safari, which I thought for sure would come through. Where is that? Lamy Safari is, is down here. You can't even see it at all. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay. I'm going to have to pick up some more of these because I think I am definitely going to cut these down and uh, make little traveler's notebook inserts with them just by cutting them down about an inch, inch and three quarters maybe. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how good this worked. So there you can see the gingerbread shading. Oh my gosh. Oh, how exciting. Okay, I'm excited these little treasures were at the store. I'm going to have to pick up some more. Um, awesome. Well, I just thought I would share this little experiment with you. I'm actually really quite pleased with it. Um, these aren't something I would necessarily want to use just because of the plastic cover, but I was interested in, in uh, the paper quality and for two bucks.
I thought, um, and you got two in a package, I thought I'd give them a try. But see, you can see here, you can actually see where I wrote on here, where on the, uh, this whole notebook, you couldn't even see that, so. Awesome. And this paper did struggle with the Birmingham ink, and it looks like it struggled a little bit with the Lamy Safari with the bold nib as well. Um, it's not as crisp as it generally is, but most everything else looks just fine. Oh, how exciting. So fun. All right. Well, I just thought I would share this with you. <clears throat> and uh, if you are in the market for some inexpensive traveler's notebook inserts, you might want to pick some of these up. Um, they were, again, at Walmart for about, I think they was, were like 92 cents. They were less than a dollar. So, And I do think they're um, comparable in size to the inserts um, that I've been buying. So let's take a look here. Yeah, and the paper is white instead of cream. There you can see. Ooh, awesome, exciting. So see, I'll just have to cut these down a little bit and if I want to, I could round the quarters with my corner chomper um, or not, but they're the exact right um, height. So good deal. So now I'm gonna use these then just for my little toss away notebooks um, where I'm not concerned about keeping anything um, for, you know, documenting history or whatever, whatever I might wanna do in my notebook over here, but uh these will be great for just toss away books. Oh, exciting. So I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. Thanks for watching and um, I will chat with you again soon. Bye. I'm back. I thought we would test this um, with the um, dip pen and the ink straight out of the bottle. So let's give this, this is the uh, gingerbread ink that I shared the other day. It's from Diamine. And uh, let's give this a test and see how it would handle a heavier ink load because it handled all of these things marvelously. See, there's nothing showing through there. So let's give this guy a chance <laughs> to prove this paper um, faulty in some way. <laughs> all right, so here we go. And now this is going to take a little bit longer to dry because it is quite a bit more ink, obviously. And I'm even going to re-dip so that I get the same type of ink load for the word gingerbread. beautiful. I can already see how it's starting to dry. There's lighter areas on the D and the I and hit, um, darker areas as well. I think this is a gorgeous ink. All right, so let me get this rinsed and we'll take a peek at the back side which is really the front side, because I'm writing on the back side. <laughs> it's been a long day, if you can't tell. And let me get this capped before I have an, a gingerbread ink disaster. That would be terrible. I have done this entire video with um, two of my lights off. Shame on me. All right, so there's that. Isn't that beautiful? You can already see the shading. Let's flip it over and see if it uh, came through the other side. Oh my gosh, <laughs> nothing. You can see the little ripples where the dampness of the ink is, but it did not come through at all. Not at all. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm definitely gonna be picking up more of these books. How fun. All right, I think that'll do it for me now. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I have one more thing to share with you.
and I didn't want to make another video, so I want to just include it on this. Um, remember how I was mentioning how I really like um, graph paper, and I love just having quick note cards I can grab um, to make quick notes on. Um, you know, if I'm just making a note at my desk that I need to carry with me. Um, I love these graph note cards. They are um, also from Walmart, Pen and Gear. Graph rule on both sides, white and uh, three by five note cards. I love these things. They are very inexpensive and um, they are so fun to write on. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, I like I like things to be uh, enjoyable regardless of what I'm doing. So um, this is the graph note card. Now these are not going to show your um, shading inks. They're not going to be, you know, showing them off by any means. But it is very enjoyable to write on these, especially with little gel pens. Um, this is the, of course now it's going to make a liar out of me and it's going to show off shading. Um, Twisby Echo. I know I spelled that wrong. There we go. Now it's fixed. <laughs> um, so, wow, it actually is showing shading. <laughs> but see, nothing comes through the backside either. So you can use both sides of these as well. And I just love these little things. Uh, they, I think I mentioned they're also from Walmart. Um, and they're always in the office supply section. So it's not even something you have to get while, you know, school supplies are in stock. They're just always in the office supply section. This is the Moon, Moon Man C1, Gingerbread, and I like using a I like using them this direction, and that's one of the things that bugs me about regular um, note cards is that the lines always go this way horizontal. I want them to be this way, so that's another reason I really love this graph paper version. Let's see, I'll show you what it looks like uh, with the gel pen on it. Because this video is not yet long enough. <laughs> so this is the Sharpie S gel. Yeah, they just write beautifully on these. Um, and the metal body. Yeah, it writes so smooth. And I just find them very enjoyable. Let's see, this is the Pilot. This is a very popular gel pen. Pilot G207. Again, super smooth. Nothing comes through. Nothing! <laughs> so, if you like graph paper and you like making quick notes, pick up a pack of this. This stuff is awesome. You'll see I already have uh, two. I have one in use and one on... Um, standby. So grab these. These are amazing, amazing little pieces of paper. So anywho, I will now wrap this and talk to you again soon. Bye.